Hello everyone, we are back with another uh, RenPy and Python tutorial today. Um, for this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is going to be the start of a series on using um, intermediate and advanced uh, data types, specifically collection types in RenPy. Um, before we get into the RenPy usage, we're going to lay the groundwork with some Python fundamentals. So I'm not using uh, RenPy or um, uh, VS Code right now as I normally do, but I actually have my Python interactive interpreter open. So if you have Python installed, it comes with this interactive interpreter called idle, I-D-L-E. You can see at the top it says idle shell. Um, so again, if you have Python, you should have this installed as well. Alternatively, you can uh, pull up your command prompt um, or your terminal if you're in uh, Macintosh or like an Apple computer or um, um, Linux. If you're on Windows, just pull up your command prompt and type in Python enter and that'll launch the automa the um, interpreter directly in your command prompt or if you're on Mac or Linux. Um, you can pull up your uh, terminal and type in Python 3. You should have to do that because they usually come uh, installed with uh, uh, Python version 2 and 3, so you got to specify 3. Some of the features that we're going to use are um, only available in later versions of Python, so I recommend using um, at least Python 3.7. Um, so right now you can see I've got 3.11, um, like it says at the top, so when you launch your interpreter it should say what version it is, and if you're using something before 3.7 you might want to upgrade that. So today uh, we are going to get into a data collection type called dictionaries. Dictionaries are pretty cool. They are a very, very powerful feature of Python and there are lots of really cool ways that we can use these in our RenPy games. So again, in part one, we're just gonna go over the fundamentals of how to use these in Python. I'll give you a little bit of taste of a taste towards the end as to what you can do with those in RenPy. And uh, in the next video, um, we'll get deeper into RenPy and show how to implement some of this stuff. So, as always, uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already so you never miss one of my new videos, and let's go ahead and jump right in. So, um, first, I'm going to do a really quick refresher on um, lists. Uh, so you have to have a good understanding of lists before you can get into dictionaries. Um, I did a, a video on lists before, so I'll link to that at the top of the screen now. So be sure to check that out if you haven't. Um, and I'm going to just give a quick refresher on lists. So if you have experience with other uh, C-based programming languages like C, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, um, anything like that, um, they call lists arrays. As far as I know, the list moniker is unique to Python, but it's basically the same thing as an array um, in other languages. Um, the way that we create a list is we can just say like new list equals, and then if we just put an empty set of square brackets, that will create an empty list. Or you can put things in it like um, you can put a name. Uh, one of the cool things about these is you can use any uh, data type you want. So you can use a string, uh, you can use an integer, you can use a float, uh, you can use Boolean, you can even use another list um, that has different values of different types. And then if I just call that list, like, you know, it prints everything out just like I had. So again, that already is a pretty powerful, really cool thing that you can do. And you can iterate over that with a for loop. You can, you know, check if things are, are in it or not. You can add things to it. You can remove things from it dynamically, all sorts of different stuff. But um, before we get into dictionaries, all you really need to understand is that a list is just a collection of different types of data. And they can be pretty much anything. Um, dictionaries are similar to that, but they have uh, a couple of extra features and um, one, one or two extra things that they need. So first I'll show you how to, um, how to uh, create a new dictionary. There are a couple of different ways to do it. You can use a constructor by saying like, I'll just say new dict equals, and you can do a constructor by typing dict in empty parentheses, and that'll create an empty dictionary. Um, the way that I like to do it though is to just do an empty set of curly braces and to use those if you uh, know where your square brackets are they're the I believe you do shift um, I've got a weird I use Dvorak keyboard layout so it's hard to tell where mine are but if you do shift and square brackets I think or maybe it's just the square bracket button uh, that'll create the uh, the curly braces and that will make an empty dictionary so now if I call that it'll show me that I have an empty dictionary. So the hallmark of a dictionary is that um, just like a dictionary that you use in, in, in the real world, um, it requires a set of key value pairs. So whenever you open a dictionary, you look up a word, which is what we will call the key. And then it has a definition, which we would call the value. And you can have multiple definitions 
per uh, key, per word, right? Um, so in dictionaries in Python, you can only have one uh, value per key. Uh, but um, you can include additional ones because just like uh, just like lists, they can take any type of data type. So you can make a value a list. So and that will let you have you know multiple different values. Basically, even though technically there's only one value, it's the list. But you can have uh, have multiple items in that list. So um, the uh, syntax for this for dictionaries is to do the key, and I'm just going to do strings right now. So you will do like key one as a string, and then a colon. And then you put in your value. So it can be like value one. And that's going to throw me an error. Actually, no, it won't because, uh, yeah, we'll just print it to the console. So, for instance, if I say new dict equals, let's do my curly braces. And I'm going to say, just like we did before, key one, value one. And let's do like three items key two, value two and key three value three normally i run uh i do hold these videos with a um uh with a um kind of a cheat sheet next to me but this one i'm going to kind of going off the cuff so um might take me a little bit more time to get stuff out there we go so now i've got let me show i've tried oh no i got a syntax error that should be a colon so again, it is value, I'm sorry, key, colon, value, comma, key, colon, value, comma, key, colon, value, and then no comma at the end, because that's the last one in the dictionary. Uh, so now, there we go, set our new dictionary. So if I call that new dict, I've got all of my key and value pairs right there. So why would you want to do this? Why would you want to do this uh, key value pair thing? Well, you can um, do different things with this. Like you can call a value by its key. Uh, so for instance, let's actually, I might be getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Um, just to let you know a couple of things about dictionaries before we go on. Um, dictionaries uh, do have a few other things about them. First of all, um, if you're using a version of Python since version 3.7, these are going to be ordered, which means they will always be in the same order you put them in. Um, before Python 3.7, there were two dictionary types. There was a dictionary and then an ordered dictionary. Um, the regular dictionary, the, the keys and the key order was arbitrary. So they could change and the program like might change them without letting you know. So if the, uh, if the, if the order that they're in was super important, you had to use an ordered dictionary, but now dictionaries are ordered by default. So if you put them in there as key one, value one, key two, value two, key three, value three, they'll always appear in that order and they will never change change. Uh, a couple other things about dictionaries is they are mutable, which means that they can be changed. So you can change anything about this. You can remove keys, you can uh, remove key and value pairs, you can add key value pairs, you can change the value of a key, um, all sorts of different things that you can do uh, with um, with uh, dictionaries like that. So again, anything you want to change, you're, you're able to do that. All right, now let's go on and talk about how to, um, how to access items. So we've already stated that if you... Yeah, put in your dict, it'll give it back to you. I can do that with a print statement. So if I do print new dict, basically it does the same thing, um, except if you're using that in an actual program, you'll have to use print. I don't believe that just like putting the name of it will work outside of the uh, the interactive interpreter. So let's say that I wanted to get the uh, value of a specific key. Like if I wanted to get the value of key one, then I could do um, key one, and actually, I think I have to put that in. There we go, because that's a string. Got to put it in quotes. So key one, and then in square brackets. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Man, I'm messing this up. Uh, new dict. There we go. And then in square brackets, key one. There we go. And it will give me the value of that key. So again, think about like a dictionary. Like I'm looking up the definition of a word. You put in the word, you get the definition or the value. Um, you can also get all keys in the dictionary uh, by using a method called keys. So just like arrays or any other data types, um, this has different methods that you can call on it that will do different things. Just remember that when you put in a method, you have to end it with um, empty parentheses so that it knows that it's a method, even if there aren't any arguments that go in there into the uh, method function. You still have to have that so it knows that it's a function or a method on the dictionary. So if I do um, udict.keys, empty parentheses, 
then it will print me out all the keys. I can also do that with a print statement. Print udict.keys. There we go. And yeah, basically does the, uh, the same thing. Um, if I want to get the values, um, you might have figured this out, but I can use the values method. So if I do print udict.values, then it will give me all of the values in sequential order. It just kind of loops over everything, and uh, yeah, it gives me all the values. Let's say that I wanted to add a value to that. Let's say I wanted to add, or a key value pair, rather. Let's say I wanted to add a key for and value for. That is really, really easy. Um, all you have to do is say a new dict. I'm going to put in the new value. Uh, oops, this should go in parentheses. Oh, wait. No, this does go in uh, square brackets because I'm accessing a value. Even though that value doesn't exist yet, it's going to. So I can say uh, value for equals. Oops. Man, I'm getting this backwards. There we go. Key for equals value for in square brackets. Oh, I don't know what I did wrong. New dict key four. Let's end my square bracket there. There we go. Equals value four. That should do it. There we go. So now when I pull up my new dict, I've got key four and value four in there. Um, you can use a similar method, uh, actually the exact same method in order to, in order to change values. Like let's say for um, new dict, this time I'm going to access the one that I just created. So I know that that already exists. So I can say key four equals, let's change that to value five. And then now, there it is, key four and value five there at the end. So again, really, really simple to um, either add or change values. You can also check to see if, if a uh, key uh, exists uh, in the dictionary. So I can say, um, let's do if key one in new dict print. Yes, key one is present. There we go. Or I can say if key five in new dict print. Yes, key five is present, but I know that it's not. So let's, uh, oops, present. Not like it matters a whole lot. Else. Print. No, it isn't. There we go. So no, it isn't because there is no key five. Um, so if you're like me, the wheels in your head are already turning as to how you can use this in RenPy. Like um, if you need a certain key or a certain uh, item in order to complete a quest, you could store a um, store it. Uh, store in inventory as a dictionary, then check to see if that item is in the dictionary. If it is, like if it's a door key, then you're able to open the door. If not, you can't, or you know something similar to that. So already seeing some uh, really cool ideas that we can do. All right, um, so we did adding items and changing items. Let's talk about how to uh, remove items. So one of the uh, common methods is the pop method, which also exists on lists. So you may have used that before. Um, the pop removes and returns the last uh, key value pair. Um, so for instance, if I say new dict dot pop, it should pop off key four value five. And oops, hang on a second. Oh no, this one, I'm sorry, it doesn't pop off the last one. You actually have to give it one to pop off. Never mind. Works a little bit differently. There you go. So if I say key four, that should work. There we go. So, and like I said, it not only removes it, but it returns it. So it returns that value, um, which you can do something with that or not. If you just want to get rid of it, then that's fine. So now if I pull up new dict, then I've just got my initial three values and the fourth one is gone because we popped that from the, uh, from the end there. Um, you can also remove a specific key value pair by using um, uh, the uh, delete keyword to, re uh, to remove it by item name. So kind of like what we just did, but a little bit different. So if I say delete new dict, and let's do, uh, this one we had to do in square brackets. Um, 
key one, remove it from the beginning. There we go, and that one removes it, but didn't return it like the pop method did, so it didn't give it back to us, um, in case you wanted to do that for some reason. Um, you can also empty the entire dictionary by using the clear method. So if I say new dict uh, dot clear, now nope, it's back to an empty dictionary, so that gets rid of absolutely everything. Um, all right, next we are going to um, loop over a dictionary. Before we do that, really quickly, I'm going to create a new dictionary object because I just cleared that one out. So this one, um, I'm going to put some actual items in. Like, let's say we're going to do inventory items. So I'm going to say this is a door key. So for this one, for the key, I'm going to use an inventory item. And the value is going to be a description of that item. Uh, door key, try using it in a door. Um, next we'll do chest key, try using it in a chest, and stack of money, try using it to buy stuff, and there we go, that should work, there we go, that's good. Um, so. Uh, we can loop over all of these items using a for loop, um, just like we would with a list in Python. So I can say for item, and, and also I've covered for loops in a previous video. I'll link to that above if you need a refresher on that. I'm just going to go over this pretty quickly without explaining absolutely everything. But for item in new dict print item. And then it will print all of the keys, door key, chest key, stack of money. So again, this could be a way that you use to print your inventory items on your inventory screen just by, you know, looping over them. Um, you could even say, uh, let's do for item in new dict, let's print item and then... If you say print uh, new dict and then in parentheses item, that will print all of the values of the item. There we go. So now it says door key, try using it in a door, chest key, try using it in a chest, stack of money, try using it to buy stuff. So again, you could use that on an inventory screen to where it'll print the item, description, item, description, and so on. Uh, so again, yeah, really cool, really, really powerful way to use uh, dictionaries. Um, you can also uh, view, uh, you can loop through both of those simultaneously, uh, the keys and the values by using the items method. So let's do for key value in new dict dot items print key value. And it'll do basically what we just did. Except it prints them all on one line. So yeah, uh, door key tries to get a door and so on. You can see that. Um, so that will work pretty well. Um, there are a few other things that you can do with dictionaries. This pretty much covers the basics, though. That's really everything that we'll need to do uh, to use it with um, RenPy. Um, but you can copy a dictionary. You can use nested dictionaries. So again, like I said, those key, uh, the uh, values, the keys have to be a string, but the uh, values can be any data type you want. So you can make those as another uh, dictionary. Uh, so again, be thinking about some different ways that you can use these. Um, like the uh, uh, example that I've been using is inventory item. Uh, one thing that I'm going to get into uh, in the next tutorial is I'm going to show you how to use these to keep track of your character stats uh, to make your character uh, classes a little bit a little bit easier to uh, to keep track of. Instead of having a different uh, variable for every single one of your stats, you can store those in a dictionary and uh, kind of make them a little bit easier to retrieve. So if you have any questions about these, um, be sure to put them in the comments below. If you have any ideas for ways that dictionaries could be used, or if you, there's anything you want to see me cover using dictionaries in a future tutorial, be sure to put that in the comments below, and I'll see about doing that soon. Uh, for now, though, stay tuned. Like I said, next time we're going to fire up uh, RenPy and VS Code, and we're going to show how to actually use these uh, to do some different uh, cool things in our game. So take care. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.